and today we're looking at the Audi RS4 B9. We're going to show exactly what happens as we move this car from stock to stage one, then stage two, and finally all the way up to stage three. This is your chance to see the numbers, the power curves, supporting hardware, boost levels, intake temperatures, and most importantly, see the difference each step makes with comparisons to the previous tune. This is the ultimate RS4 B9 dialogue comparison video, step by step. First things first, stock car. We need to do a baseline run with the RS4 in completely stock form. The car is a 2020 facelift GPF car. It's done 90,000 miles and we haven't done any prep for this. We just put it on the dyno and did these power runs to see what it was producing before stage one. Let's see the dyno run. We're getting 437 PS and 590 newton meters. We're around 10 newton meters and 10 PS down on Audi's claimed figures. Boost value is now for this stock tune, one bar at 2,100 RPM, rising to 1.38 bar, then that tapers off to 1.2 bar at red line. So now we're going to look at the intake temperatures throughout the rev range, and we get a temperature here of 43 degrees C. That's going to give us a good idea now with the stage one tune, how the stock charge cool performs, with stage one. Bearing in mind, intake temperatures on a dyno are slightly exaggerated. Even with the best dyno cooling here, we have an MRC. Now, one question we get asked is, why does a car with a GPF make less power than one without? Let's break it down. What is a GPF? A gasoline particulate filter. Basically, it's to, make, to meet strict emission regulations. Now, its job is to trap tiny soot particles before they leave the exhaust. It's great for the environment, but not so great for performance. Now, the structure of a GPF is like a honeycomb filter. A bit like a DPF, exhaust gases pass through it. That creates extra back pressure, which makes it harder for the engine to push gases out. Now, in the RS4 B9, it's turbocharged. Efficient exhaust flow is critical. The faster the exhaust gases get out, the faster the turbo spools and the more efficiently the engine breathes. With a GPF restricting that flow, the turbo can't spin up as quickly. Power delivery is softer. Peak horsepower is reduced and the GPF can't, can get sooted up, which restricts it even more. Now the power we made was 10 PS down on the original, on the official Audi figures. This could be down to a number of reasons, but one may be that a GPF force regen could be needed. Next up, stage one. This is where we introduce our MRC, ECU and TCU software, optimized for the factory hardware. Unlocking more boost, more torque and sharper throttle response, all within safe tolerances. Remember, if you like this video and want to see more like this, please let us know by liking the video, subscribe to the channel and tick the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos from us. And leave a comment in the description telling us what do you think of Audi's latest RS4? On to stage one. So, ECU and TCU tune on there, stage one hardware upgrade. It's just a performance air filter for this. Let's see the dyno run. Okay, so now we're looking at the dyno plot for our stage one car versus stock. We ended up with 529 PS, 736 Newton meters. So this power curve looks very similar to stock, very linear, slightly raised to 2,500 RPM, but consistently through to red line. The red line's now been increased as well with the stage one software. Looking at the torque now, we've got a very big low end increase from 2,000 to 2,500 RPM. If we're looking at how it delivers torque, it comes in stronger now, lower down the revs, and then it's very flat until about 5,000 RPM. Then it starts to taper off, but it still consistently keeps an increase all the way to red line over stock. So the difference between that and stock is now 91 PS gains and gained 145 newton meters. 21% increase over stock power, 
and 25 increase over torque. Now we're looking at the stage one boost values now. 1.5 bar at 2,400 RPM, rising to 1.75 bar at redline. And how does the intake temperatures look? Well, for stage one, we now see 57 degrees C at redline. Like I said before, these are slightly exaggerated due to dynamic cooling and how this would be compared to on the road. However, we've got a delta rise of 14 degrees C from stage one to stock. This is gonna give us a good idea now for stage two, when we put on the Wagner cooler next to see the difference that makes and if it drops it by much. So stage two, this is where things start to get serious. With stage two, we add supporting hardware. Miltech Sport downpipes with race cats. We've got a full Miltech exhaust on there with a single box at the back, Wagner charge cooler, IE turbo intake and low or high pressure fuel pump combined with a custom MRC stage two ECU and TCU. That means more airflow, more efficient exhaust flow, big jump in mid-range torque. Let's see the dyno rod. Looking at the dyno plot for stage two versus stage one, we've ended up with 572 PS, 867 newton meters. Fantastic results. We've gained over 40 PS over stage one, and we've gained 130 newton meters of torque. Like stage one, the power comes in the same, very linear all the way up to peak power, 5,500 RPM now. That 40 PS seems to be from around 3,000 all the way up to 5,000 RPM, but through the mid range. It's also keeping the power to the red line tapering off from around 5,500 RPM. Now torque comes in slightly earlier now with stage two. It reaches its peak at 2,500 RPM, slightly earlier than with stage one. However, the peak numbers now are a lot higher, 130 newton meters gained from 2,500 RPM up to 4,000 RPM. That's a big low end to mid range torque increase. That increase is held all the way to red line, tapering off slowly, but keeping an increase over stage one throughout the rev range. So now looking at the boost values for stage two, we've got 1.85 bar at 2,700 RPM all the way to red line flat. This is maxing out the stock turbos at stage two. We can't run any more boost on these. If we look at the intake temperatures now, we can see that the Wagner cooler has done a really good job of cooling this at stage two. We have 28 degrees at red line. That's 29 degrees colder than the 57 from stage one. This means at stage two with the extra cooling, and more consistent temperatures, we should be producing the peak power for longer, even when driving the car hard. The wagon's coping really well with the extra boost and the extra requirements of stage two. Now for the big one, stage three. This is the ultimate package for the RS4 B9. We upgrade the bottleneck turbochargers with TTE 720s. Everything else to support this was already done at stage two. Then we retune with our custom software. This is where the RS4 goes from quick to supercar fast. We usually expect to see a big jump in power here with the hybrid turbos. Let's see the dyno run. So now looking at the stage three versus stage two tune, we've got an increase of 130 PS. That's a huge increase with the TT 720s. We have a slight reduction in torque from around 5,000, but we are being very safe at low end with this tune. We haven't gone silly high boost at low revs to make more torque purely for safety. There is more headroom in what the turbos can do. Let's look at the power curve first. We've got a very similar power curve, very linear once you get to 5,000 RPM but the power just keeps on coming all the way to red line. Whereas with stage two, we get to our peak power and then it starts to taper off at 5,500 RPM. Stage three continues to build from 5,500 and keep climbing all the way to the red line. And it's the same with the torque. Because we're being safe with these turbos, 
they don't come in as hard low down as the stock turbos do. However, once they do come in around the 3000 RPM to 3500 RPM, they're going to keep going on to redline. So the difference from 5000 RPM to redline, you can really see here, they don't really taper off that much. There's only a reduction of 82 newton meters from peak torque to redline. Whereas with stage two, from 5000 RPM, they were tapering off around 250 newton meters over the rev range. So now look at the boost values in stage three tune. We've got two bar at 3,200 RPM, rising to 2.4 bar now at redline. Like we said, there's more headroom in these turbos, but for now we're keeping the tune super safe. So now look at the intake temperature between stage three and stage two, and this is the, where it gets really interesting. We see a maximum of 31 degrees C, so we've only got a three degrees delta rise from stage two to stage three, and it just shows that the Wagner charge cooler is coping really well with the extra heat from the bigger turbos. Now there's always talk about air to air for these cars, but we feel that the application, the charge cooler was a great choice for this, this car. So if you're looking at this Dynaplot wondering, should you do stage one, two or three, you might say, what would stage three feel like compared to stage two? How does that relate to driving the car on the road? Well, look at the shift points of the TCU software we use. Based on the Audi performance gear max as a starter, it changes it around 5,500 RPM. So if you imagine the power delivery here, all the extra power and torque of stage three is provided above 5,500 RPM. This is exactly where the gearbox changes to in the power band. That's gonna give a real increase in drivability. So let's look at the gains over a stock car. We have 261 PS, 238 Newton meters. That's 60% power increase over stock and a 40% increase in torque over stock. But what's really nice to see now at stage three with the hybrid turbos, the delivery is much like the stock delivery, just with a lot more power and torque. It's got the same characteristics of stock, but just really improved. So let us know in the comments, what stage do you think is the best? So there you have it. So if you wanna see what we can do for your RS4 B9 or any other performance model, check out mrctuning.com or on our socials and get in touch to book your upgrade. Info at mrctuning.com. Thanks for watching. And remember, it's not just tuning, it's MRC tuning. Catch you next time.